and welcome to the ICICI Bank's Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sandeep Bakshi, Managing Director and CEO of ICICI Bank. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening to all of you and welcome to the ICICI Bank earnings call to discuss the results for Q4 of financial year 2023. Joining us today on this call are Anu, Sandeep Batra, Rakesh, Anandya and Abhinay. The Indian economy has continued to show resilience amidst the volatile global environment. The underlying growth momentum is visible in increasing steel and cement output, GST collection, capacity utilization, rising demand for electricity and travel. The government-led capex cycle is continuing. Financial stability has been maintained and inflation, though elevated, has moderated from its peak. We will continue to monitor these developments closely. Our strategic focus is growing our risk calibrated core operating profit through the 360 degree customer centric approach and by serving opportunities across customer segments and ecosystems. We continue to operate within our strategic framework and strengthen our franchise, enhance our delivery and servicing capabilities, and expand our te technology and digital offerings. The core operating profit increased by 36.4% year on year to 138.66 billion rupees in this quarter and increased by 28.1% year on year to 491.39 billion rupees in financial year 2023. Core operating profit less provisions grew by 34.7% year on year to 122.47 billion rupees this quarter and increased by 43% year on year to 424.73 billion rupees in financial year 2023. The profit after tax grew by 30% year on year to 91.22 billion rupees in this quarter. For the fiscal year 2023, the profit after tax grew by 36.7% year on year to 318.96 billion rupees. The board has recommended a dividend of 8 rupees per share for financial 2023 subject to requisite approvals. Total deposits grew by 10.9% year on year and 5.2% sequentially at March 31, 2023. Term deposits increased by 17.1% year on year and 4.3% sequentially at March 31, 2023. During the quarter, the average current and saving account deposits grew by 8% year-on-year and 1.2% sequentially. The liquidity coverage ratio for the quarter was about 124%. The retail loan portfolio grew by 22.7% year-on-year and 5.4% sequentially at March 31, 2023. Including non-fund-based outstanding, the retail portfolio was 45.7% of the total portfolio. The business banking portfolio grew by 34.9% year-on-year and 7.8% sequentially. The SME portfolio grew by 19.2% year-on-year and 6.2% sequentially. The growth in SME and business banking portfolios was driven by leveraging our branch network and digital offerings such as InstaBiz and Merchant Stack. The domestic corporate portfolio grew by 21.2% year-on-year and 3.8% sequentially at March 31, 2023, driven by growth across well-rated financial and non-financial corporates. The rural portfolio grew by 13.8% year-on-year and 5.5% sequentially. The domestic loan portfolio grew by 20.5% year-on-year and 5% sequentially. The overall loan portfolio grew by 18.7% year-on-year and 4.7% sequentially at March 31, 2023. We continue to enhance our digital offerings and platforms to onboard new customers in a seamless manner, provide them end-to-end -end digital journeys and personalized solutions, 
and enable a more effective data-driven cross-sell and upsell. We have shared some details on our technology and digital offerings in slides 17 to 28 of the investor presentation. The net NPA ratio declined to 0.48% at March 31, 2023 from 0.55% at December 31, 2022 and 0.76% at March 31, 2022. During the quarter, there were net additions of 0.14 billion rupees to gross NPAs, excluding write-offs and sales. The provisioning coverage ratio on NPAs was 82.8% at March 31, 2023. The total provisions during the quarter were 16.19 billion rupees or 11.7% of core operating profit and 0.7% of average advances. This includes contingency provision of 16 billion, 16, 16 billion rupees made on a prudent basis. The bank holds contingency provisions of 131 billion rupees or about 1.3% of total loans as of March 31, 2023. The capital position of the bank continued to be strong with a CET1 ratio of 17.12% Tire 1 ratio of 17.6% and total capital adequacy ratio of 18.34% at March 31, 2023 after reckoning the impact of proposed dividend. Looking ahead, we see many opportunities to drive growth in the, in the risk calibrated core operating profits. We believe our focus on customer 360, extensive franchise and synergy and collaboration within the organization backed by your digital offerings and process improvement and service delivery initiatives, will enable us to deliver customized solutions to customers in a seamless manner and grow market share across key segments. We will continue to make investments in technology, people, distribution, and building a brand. We will remain focused on maintaining a strong balance sheet with prudent provisioning and healthy levels of capital. The principles of fair to customer, fair to bank, and one bank, one team, one ROE will continue to guide our operations. We remain focused on delivering consistent and predictable returns to our shareholders. I now hand the call over to Anandya. Thank you, Sandeep. <clears throat> I will talk about balance sheet growth, credit quality, uh, p and details, growth in digital offerings, portfolio trends, and the performance of subsidies. Uh, balance sheet growth, Sandeep covered the loan growth across various segments. Uh, coming to the growth across retail products, the mortgage portfolio grew by 17.6% year-on-year and 4% sequentially. Auto loans grew by 23.2% year-on-year and 5.1% sequentially. The commercial vehicles and equipment portfolio grew by 5.2% year-on-year and 3.8% sequentially. Growth in the personal loan and credit card portfolio was 43.2% year-on-year and 9% sequentially. This portfolio was uh, 1258.96 billion rupees or 12.3% of the overall loan book at March 31st, 2023. Uh, the overseas loan portfolio in US dollar terms declined by 23.8% year on year and 2.6% sequentially at March 31st, 2023. Uh, the overseas loan portfolio was about 3.3% of the overall loan book at March 31st, 2023. The non-India linked corporate portfolio declined by 52.3% or about 336 million US dollars on a year-on-year -year basis. Of the overseas corporate portfolio, about 89% comprises Indian corporates, 7% is overseas corporates with Indian linkage, 2% comprises companies owned by NRIs or PIOs, and the balance 2% is non-India corporates. Credit quality. There were net additions of 0.14 billion rupees to gross NPAs in the current quarter compared to 11.19 billion rupees in the previous quarter. The net additions to gross NPAs were 8.73 billion rupees in the retail, rural and business banking portfolios. And there were net deletions from gross NPAs of 8.59 billion rupees in the corporate and SME portfolio. The gross NPA additions were 42.97 billion rupees in the current quarter compared to 57.23 billion rupees in the previous quarter. The gross NPA additions from the retail, rural and business banking portfolio were 40.20 billion rupees 
and from the corporate and SME portfolio were 2.77 billion rupees. Recoveries and upgrades from gross NPAs, excluding write-offs and sales, were 42.83 billion rupees in the current quarter, compared to 46.04 billion rupees in the previous quarter. There were recoveries and upgrades of 31.47 billion rupees from the retail, rural, and business banking portfolio, and 11.36 billion rupees from the corporate and SME portfolio. The gross NPAs written off during the quarter were 11.58 billion rupees. There was sale of NPAs of 2.01 billion rupees for cash in the current quarter, compared to no sale of NPAs in the previous quarter. Net NPAs declined by 25.9% year on year and 8% sequentially to 51.55 billion rupees at March 31st, 2003. The non-fund based outstanding to borrowers classified as non-performing was 37.8 billion rupees as of March 31st, 2023, compared to 38.69 billion rupees as of December 31st, 2022. The bank holds provisions amounting to 20.05 billion rupees against this non-fund based outstanding. The total fund based outstanding to all standard borrowers under resolution as per various guidelines declines to 45.08 billion rupees or about 0.4% of the total loan portfolio at March 31st, 2023 from 49.87 billion rupees as of December 31st, 2022. Of the total fund based outstanding under resolution at March 31, 2023, 38.33 billion rupees was from the retail, rural and business banking portfolio and 6.75 billion rupees was from the corporate and SME portfolio. The bank holds provisions of 13.8 billion rupees against these borrowers, which is higher than the requirement as per RBI guidelines. Moving on to the PNL details, <clears throat> net interest income increased by 40.2% year on year to 176.67 billion rupees in the quarter. The net interest margin was 4.9% in this quarter compared to 4.65% in the previous quarter and 4% in Q4 of last year. The net interest margin was 4.48% in FY 2023. The impact of interest on income tax refund on net interest margin was nil in Q4 of this year and in the previous quarter compared to one basis point in Q4 of last year. The domestic NIM was at 5.02% this quarter compared to 4.79% in the previous quarter and 4.12% in Q4 of last year. Of the total domestic loans, interest rates on 46% are linked to the repo rate, 3% to other external benchmarks, and 20% to NCLR and other older benchmarks. The balance, 31% uh, of loans, have fixed interest rates. The cost of deposits was 3.98% in this quarter compared to 3.65% in the previous quarter. The sequential increase in NIM reflects the impact of increase in uh, interest rates on loan yields, while repricing of deposits occurs with a lag. We expect to see the cost of deposits continuing to increase in future quarters. Non-interest income excluding treasury income grew by 11.3% year-on-year to 51.27 billion rupees in Q4 of 2023. Fee income increased by 10.6% year-on-year to 48.30 billion rupees in this quarter. Fees from retail, rural, business banking and SME customers grew by 14.8% year-on-year and constituted about 80% of the total fees in this quarter. Dividend income from subsidiaries and associates was 2.73 billion rupees in this quarter compared to 2.32 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. The dividend income this quarter included interim dividends from ICICI Prudential Asset Management and dividends from ICICI Nine Canada. On costs, the bank's operating expenses increased by 26.7% year-on-year in this quarter. <clears throat> the bank had about 129,000 employees at March 31st, 2023. The employee count has increased by about 23,200 in fiscal 2023. Uh, employee expenses increased by 40% year-on-year in this quarter. During the quarter, the bank took a more conservative approach on certain assumptions underlying the provisions for retirement benefit obligations, 
which resulted uh, in an additional expense of 3.35 billion rupees. Non-employee expenses increased by 19.6% year-on-year in this quarter, primarily due to retail business-related expenses and technology expenses. Our branch count has increased by about 480 in the last 12 months, and we had 5,900 branches as of March 31st, 2023. The technology expenses were 9.3% of our operating expenses in this fiscal year, compared to about 8.6% in the last fiscal year. The core operating profit increased by 36.4% year-on-year to 138.66 billion rupees in this quarter. Uh, excluding dividend income from subsidiaries and associates, the core operating profit grew by 36.9% year-on-year. The core operating profit increased by 28.1% year-on-year to 491.39 billion rupees in the full year FY 2023. The total provision during the quarter was 16.19 billion rupees or 11.7% of core operating profit and 0.7% of average advances. These include contingency provisions of 16 billion rupees made on a prudent basis. The total provision during FY 2023 decreased by 22.9% year on year to 66.66 billion rupees. During the year, the bank made contingency provisions of 56.5 billion rupees, and the impact of change in provisioning norms for corporate SME and business banking, NPA, to make them more conservative was about 11.96 billion rupees. The provisioning coverage on NPA was 82.8% as of March 31st, 2023. Uh, in addition, we hold 13.8 billion rupees of provisions on borrowers under resolution. Further, the bank holds contingency provision of 131 billion rupees as of March 31st, 2023. At March end, the total provisions, other than specific provisions on fund based outstanding to borrowers classified as non performing, were 226.35 billion rupees or 2.2% of loans. Core operating profit less provision grew by 34.7% year on year to 122.47 billion rupees in Q4 of this year. There was a treasury loss of 0.40 billion rupees in Q4 compared to a gain of 1.29 billion rupees in Q4 of the previous year. The tax expense was 30.85 billion rupees in this quarter compared to 22.05 billion rupees in the corresponding quarter last year. The profit after tax grew by 30% year on year to 91.22 billion rupees in this quarter. The profit after tax grew by 36.7% year on year to 318.96 billion rupees in FY 2023. The consolidated profit after tax grew by 27.6% year on year to 98.53 billion rupees in this quarter. The consolidated profit after tax grew by 35.6% year on year to 340.37 billion rupees in FY 2023. Moving on to growth in our digital offering, leveraging digital and technology across businesses is a key element of our strategy of growing the risk calibrated core operating profit. We continue to see increasing adoption and usage of our digital platforms by our customers. There have been more than 9 million activations of iMobile Pay by non ICICI bank account holders as of end March. The value of transactions by non ICICI bank account holders in Q4 of this year was 1.3 times the value of transactions in Q4 of last year. We have seen about 225,000 registrations from non-ICICI bank account holders on Instabiz uh, till March 31st, 2023. The value of financial transactions on Instabiz grew about 22% year on year in this fiscal year. We have created more than 20 industry-specific stacks which provide bespoke and purpose-based digital solutions to corporate clients and their ecosystem. Our trade online and trade emerge platforms allow customers to perform most of their trade finance and foreign exchange transactions digitally. About 70% of trade transactions were done digitally in Q4 of this year. The value of transactions done through these platforms in Q4 of this year was 1.7 times the value of transactions in Q4 of last year. Recently, the bank launched Startup ecosystem banking to cater to the banking needs of startups across their life cycle through its domestic and international network and branch at Gift City. 
the bank offers comprehensive solutions in the areas of treasury transaction banking lending managing foreign direct investments and regulatory compliance along with personal banking services for employees and founders During the quarter, the bank launched an array of digital solutions for capital market participants and clients of custody services. The solutions enable various participants, including brokers, portfolio management service providers, foreign portfolio investors, foreign direct investors, and alternative investment funds to seamlessly meet all their banking requirements. Uh, we have provided details on our retail business banking and SME portfolio in slide 34 to 45 of the investor presentation. The loan and non-fund based outstanding to performing corporate and SME borrowers rated double B and below was 47.04 billion rupees at. At uh, March uh, 31, 2023. Compared to 55.81 billion rupees at December 31, 2022, and 108.08 billion rupees at March 31, 2022, the sequential decline was primarily due to prepayments and repayments during the quarter. The total outstanding of 47.04 billion rupees at March 31, 2023 includes 7.74 billion rupees of loan and non-fund based outstanding to borrowers under resolution. The maximum single borrower, <coughs> single borrower outstanding in the double B and below portfolio was less than five billion rupees at March 31, 2023. At March 31, 2023, we held provisions of 4.09 billion rupees on the double B and below portfolio, compared to 4.48 billion rupees at December 31, 2022. This includes uh, provisions held against borrowers under resolution included in the double B and below portfolio. The total outstanding to NBFCs and HFCs was 834.90 billion rupees at March 31, 2023, compared to 765.4 billion rupees at December 31, 2022. The total outstanding to NBFCs and HFCs uh, was uh, were about 8 percent of our advances at March 31, 2023. The sequential increase in the outstanding to NBFCs and HFCs is mainly due to disbursements to entities having long vintage and entities owned by well-established corporate groups. The builder portfolio, including construction finance, lease rental dis- discounting, term loans, and working capital, was 398.87 billion rupees at March 31, 2023, compared to 360.11 billion rupees at December 31, 2022. The builder portfolio is about 4% of our total loan portfolio. Our portfolio largely comprises well-established builders, and this is also reflected in the sequential increase in the portfolio. About 4.6% of the builder portfolio at March 31, 2023, was either rated double B and below internally, or was classified as non-performing, uh, compared to 5.6% at December 31, 2022. Uh, finally, uh, moving on to subsidiaries and key associates, uh, the details of the financial performance of subsidiaries and key associates are covered in slides 49 to 51 and 71 to 76 in the investor presentation. Uh, the VMB margin of ICICI Life increased from 28% in FY 2022 to 32% in FY 2023. The value of new business increased by 27.8% year on year. To 27.65 billion rupees in FY 2023. <clears throat> the annualized premium equivalent grew by 11.7 percent year on year to 86.40 billion rupees in FY 2023. The profit after tax of ICICI Life increased by 7.6 percent year on year to 8.11 billion rupees in FY 2023, compared to 7.54 billion rupees in FY 2022. Uh, the profit after tax grew by 27% year on year to 2.35 billion rupees in Q4 this year compared to 1.85 billion rupees in Q4 last year the gross direct premium income of icici general was 210.25 billion rupees in fy 2023 compared to 179.77 billion rupees in fy 2022 The combined ratio was 104.5% in FY 2023 compared to 108.8% in FY 2022. The profit after tax was 17.29 billion rupees in FY 2023 compared to 12.71 billion rupees in FY 2022. The profit after tax in FY 2023 includes 
reversal of tax provisions of 1.28 billion rupees. The profit after tax was 4.37 billion rupees this quarter compared to 3.13 billion rupees in Q4 last year. The profit after tax of ICICI AMC was 3.87 billion rupees in this quarter compared to 3.57 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. Uh, the profit after tax of ICICI Securities, as per NBS on a consolidated basis, was 2.63 billion rupees in this quarter compared to 3.40 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. ICICI Bank Canada had a profit after tax of 15.6 million Canadian dollars in this quarter compared to 4.3 million Canadian dollars in Q4 last year. Uh, ICICI Bank UK had a profit after tax of 5 million US dollars this quarter compared to 3.1 million US dollars in Q4 of last year. Uh, as per NDS, ICICI Home Finance had a profit after tax of 0 0.96 billion rupees in the current quarter compared to 0 0.53 billion rupees in Q4 of last year. With this, we conclude our opening remarks and we will now be happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Maharuk Arajania from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, congratulations. My first question is on outlook for margins. So obviously the margin achievement for FI23 has been phenomenal. Uh, but would you have a threshold below which you think margins won't fall? Because obviously margins are peakish for the sector. So could you give us a band in which you would like to hold margins, uh, even if they are not sustainable at these levels? That's my first question. I don't think that, uh, you know, we can really give a band. Uh, our effort, first of all, would be to continue to grow our liabilities franchise uh, in a healthy way uh, across, uh, you know, uh, optimizing quantum and cost, because that is really the starting point. Uh, and then price are lending uh, in an appropriate fashion while, of course, looking at the entire uh, ecosystem and customer level uh, profitability. Uh, and also manage uh, interest rate risk and uh, earnings at risk on the balance sheet as, as best we can, uh, while you know having to work with the fact that uh, the requirement of pricing a large part of the lending to external benchmarks does create this uh, cyclicality. Uh, and then we will see, you know, where we emerge out of it. Our, our endeavor, of course, would be to, you know, protect our operating profitability uh, uh, as far as we can. Sure. And I have another two questions. Firstly, on OPEX, so uh, would you have any branch addition plan or target for next year? How many branches do you plan to add? So uh, if you see, Maruk, this year the pace of branch additions has picked up significantly. We have added 480 branches in the year, and out of that, 180 has come in the fourth quarter. So uh, I think uh, that's kind of a starting run rate, and uh, we should see uh, you know, significantly higher branch additions next year than what we have seen this year. Okay, and my last question is uh, on the insurance subsidiaries. So after RBI's approval to HDFC yesterday, uh, would you review your uh, uh, plans for your stakes in your insurance subsidiary? I mean, how do you view uh, your stakes now after what happened yesterday? I think uh, we have, uh, as you may have seen, uh, we have received an extension of the timeline uh, required for compliance okay. with uh, uh, the the uh, VR Act uh, to September 2024. So we have uh, sufficient time to uh, think things uh, think uh, things through and take you know the appropriate course of action. So that's what we will do. Okay, but there is no uh, firm thought already that 
you would not now want to increase take in subsidies or any such thing right it's open for review and discussion i just repeat that we have uh, you know uh, a year and a half to comply uh, with the requirements of the act which uh, require us to either be above 50 or below 30 so we see uh, you know over this period of time uh, uh, what to do sure thanks a lot thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of hiren kumar thakurlal desai an individual investor please go ahead yeah so i have uh, three questions okay one has been mean related based on example so deposit growth has uh, struggled a little bit as uh, in comparison to advance growth so is there some um, strategy we have in place to kind of so i think uh, you know we have uh, pretty comfortably funded a 20% uh, loan growth uh, with a level of deposit growth while maintaining a pretty healthy levels of liquidity Uh, we started the year with significant excess liquidity and as we ran that down we have ran you know uh, increased the deposit growth so if you look at the second half of the year deposit growth uh, has been approximately i think uh, uh, three times uh, of what it was in the first half and that momentum is continuing so we don't have any concerns on that front so in uh, the the follow up to that is so do we believe that we are somewhere close to peak in deposit rate or banks may have to increase it further i think that really depends on uh, the policy uh, how the policy rates move and uh, how different banks uh, you know position themselves in a in a competitive context uh, i think currently for the last uh, a couple of months the rates have been quite stable and we don't see an immediate trigger okay and uh, one last question is so we have seen a jump in provision so is there some sign of uh, asset quality issue that you see or it's purely i mean just a prudent uh, provisioning given that we are having very good margins and profitability actually on a full year basis our provisions have declined by uh, more than 20% and uh, uh, this uh, this is despite our making contingency provision uh, on a prudent basis of 56.5 billion rupees as well as the impact of the uh, change in our provisioning norms to make them more conservative which was about 12 billion rupees so excluding these two our provisions for the year would actually be negative so we are not seeing any uptick in provisions at all uh, sorry sorry to persist but my question was more on q4 uh, of the corresponding so again in q4 uh, we made total provisions of 16.19 billion rupees of which the contingency provision itself was 16 billion rupees so excluding that the provisions were uh, you know negligible no no i get that but contingency also is i mean just that there is nothing more to read into no we have uh, it is uh, a part of our uh, approach of being prudent and uh, strengthening the balance sheet okay thank you that answer thank you we have a next question from the line of abhishek morarka from hsbc please go ahead yeah good evening and thanks for taking my question so the first question is going back to nim we see that your yield uh, on funds is or yield on advances is still growing at you know 50 60 bips qoq even though your cost of funds now is increasing at a faster pace so when does this inflection happen uh, and on an average do you think in fi 24 uh, over 23 or nims will move up still or do you think that on average it would be let's say flattish uh, so uh, the if you look at it i think in this quarter we had the benefit of the uh, repo rate hike which took place in december which fed through into the uh, uh, external benchmark linked portfolios 
our yield on investment has also gone up as we have uh, you know increased our uh, the government bond portfolio at higher yields and we have also seen a repricing of our uh, floating rate bond portfolio uh, at the same time the deposit costs have also started to reflect the higher deposit rates uh, or the higher rates at which uh, deposits are being waived incrementally so uh, i think we would believe that the wins are at at kind of peak or near the levels and from here uh, we should see a moderation of course uh, it's uh, difficult to give a very precise uh, outlook on that so uh, i wouldn't want to get into you know the level of win for next year uh, as i said our focus will be on you know growing the business in a sustainable way so ananya just uh, going or taking that forward do you think then uh, the loan growth will become more operative uh, you know to drive peep up growth because nim should largely moderate from here uh, and then there's more pressure to maintain a let's say a 18 19% loan growth and do you think that's possible uh, i don't think we would see it as a pressure to do anything i mean we would uh, we would uh, believe that there is you know sufficient opportunity for us to uh, grow and that uh, we are quite comfortable from a funding perspective uh, to support that level of growth but yeah mathematically uh, you know uh, growth in earnings would be more driven by uh, you know growth in the business than uh, any you know growth increase in margin for sure right and your loan growth outlook for next year can you share uh, i mean do you think the system growth is going to slow down from here as, and how are you going to be placed relative to that i think that uh, most of the analysts are predicting uh, a forecasting a slow down in system growth which is where we have ended the year at whatever 15 16% may come down by 2 3 percentage points Uh, from our perspective uh, you know we continue to see pretty strong momentum uh, in uh, across the retail products uh, and that we have seen in the fourth quarter as well uh, and in certain product uh, in certain customer segments uh, such as sme and business banking uh, for example uh, we continue to ha- you know have a market share that is lower than you know our our overall market share and there is a uh, you know higher growth opportunity for us and for most of these segments as we spoke about uh, you know in the call we believe our uh, you know product offerings and our digital offerings are pretty strong and we are uh, you know uh, uh, growing our distribution as well uh, you would have seen the uh, employee count additions that we have done and what we've spoken about branches so uh, we are uh, i would say pretty optimistic on the growth outlook Sure. So you should be able to hold on to, let's say, current growth rate given all these uh, efforts that you're taking. We don't target a particular level of uh, loan growth, but I mean, I'm not seeing anything today which uh, suggests that there could be, you know, any material drop, uh, or, or that we would not be able to grow our business, or that demand would be inadequate. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Do you mind if I squeeze in one very quick question, if that's okay? Yes. Please. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. So, uh, just on this uh, branch addition, you said it's going to go up significantly. If we look at 480 branches roughly that you have added, that's around nine ten percent of your opening branch count. Uh, do you think this run rate will go up? As in, you will end up adding maybe 15 percent of your current branch count, or do you think this run rate remains the same? So it could go up as well. okay and the hiring is in anticipation of that because the employee per branch has gone up yeah so branch you know there there may not be a that we are direct uh, correlation we would be hiring across a range of uh, functions including for example credit uh, frontline sales uh, you know technology uh, and product uh, teams and so on but uh, yeah obviously uh, you know given the level of hiring that we've done in the last 6 months uh, we would expect you know those to become productive over the next year got it thanks so much and all the best for future quarters thank you thank you
ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure the, that management is able to answer queries from all participants kindly restrict your questions to two at a time you may join back the queue for follow up questions we have a next question from the line of kunal shah from city group please go ahead yeah hi congratulations uh, good set of numbers so firstly on the operating profit uh, given that nim trajectory could uh, slow down there could be some moderation in the overall industry wide uh, uh, credit growth and since we are um, investing into the franchise as well so maybe in terms of uh, what we have been highlighting with respect to 20% uh, operating profit growth all through over past several years maybe uh, what are the levers available just to ensure that the uh, operating profit growth uh, sustains uh, in that range uh, or there should be uh, definitely a moderation which uh, yeah, we should see over next couple of quarters i think uh, what we have seen on the operating profit growth has really been an outcome of the uh, business that we have done and the writing that we have done Uh, our liability profile and uh, you know our approach to uh, you know overall profitability uh, i think uh, you know when we uh, you know really adopted operating profit as the main operative uh, met, you know metric for us we were making a significant provision on our uh, you know historic uh, npl book and uh, now if we look at it uh, you know that is largely addressed and given the uh, kind of provisioning policies that we have now where uh, there is very little lag uh, between an asset you know turning delinquent uh, and uh, or over 90 day and getting provided for uh, the uh, the the credit or op, uh, operating profit less provision is a pretty uh, you know accurate reflector of the uh, earnings of the business or the or the growth and quality of the business so that's uh, one thing to keep in mind uh, as, of course uh, as uh, you know we would know and as we have discussed in the past that uh, the kind of margin expansion that we have seen this year uh, will not be there uh, next year and there will be some pressure on margin but uh, that will hopefully you know we will get uh, uh, addressed uh, uh, you know along with growth for any levers with respect to either the income or maybe uh some other uh, line items which can provide incremental delta so i don't think we are looking at it on a you know line item uh, thing of p income uh, we we see a lot of opportunity in the market and that is what we would try to uh, uh, you know uh, capitalize on and uh, uh, you know look at the overall kind of earnings performance of the business uh, uh, including uh, credit card and lastly in terms of uh, the overall uh, term deposit growth if you can throw some color in terms of how much uh, has been say from the retail side and how much was wholesale because uh, there was a strong growth which was there in this quarter yeah so we are focused mainly on the retail uh, and more granular deposit growth uh, I, we are not really been uh, large takers of of uh, high value bulk deposit Okay, so larger part of the growth is retail. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Ah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Ah, uh, and congratulations on very strong performance. so one question is like uh, on the trend and recoveries and upgrades uh, what is really driving this and uh, what is uh, what have we changed in our underwriting approach to enable like negligible credit cost on successive basis while the entire system is reporting a very benign credit cost but numbers for icici with almost uh, zero to negative credit cost is is way better than everybody else Uh, this year uh, one uh, aspect that we have benefited from is pretty strong recoveries on the corporate side so we were able to complete uh, the resolution of some of the older uh, corporate npl so uh, you know and that's why we split out the uh, corporate and retail uh, you know additions and deletions uh, for you and uh, you know those deletions on the corporate side would also reflect into some level of write back Uh, on the retail side i think our experience uh, with the portfolio has 
uh, been uh, pretty good, uh, both in terms of the uh, the performance in terms of overdues and uh, bounces and so on, and uh, at the same time, uh, you know, also uh, in terms of the collections of delinquent accounts. Uh, again, because we have accelerated our provisioning on these portfolios significantly, you know, they become uh, delinquent, we provide, and then as the collection efforts continue, uh, the customers, uh, you know, uh, become regular, uh, become regularized again. So when we have a granular portfolio, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, delinquency and recovery can happen uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a much quicker manner than, uh, you know, in a larger, chunkier corporate portfolio where it can take several years uh, to resolve an account. Right. Sure. And uh, secondly, uh, while, Ananda, you talked about the growth opportunities in the retail business, but how, how do you see the growth prospects in the corporate banking going into FI24 and uh, FI25? difficult to uh, uh, predict. I, I think uh, this year, of course, as you would have seen, our corporate banking, uh, our wholesale banking growth has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, higher than in the previous years. I think for the system also, there has been a recovery in corporate credit growth, uh, I guess, post the turn in the monetary environment and some shift from bond markets uh, uh, to banks. Uh, we are seeing certainly opportunities for lending in some of the sectors like uh, NDFCs, uh, real estate, uh, where we have, where, uh, you know, which has uh, become a significantly stronger sector in the last uh, three, four years. So uh, there are those opportunities. Uh, the public sector companies continue to uh, invest uh, as well. So uh, these are some of the opportunities which are there. And we really look at sort of for each corporate client, what is the overall ecosystem opportunity and, uh, you know, lending is a part of that. Right. And, and lastly, if you can just uh, share some color on the uh, treasury losses, this quarter, very small treasury loss of 40 odd crores. Uh, some split of this, if you can share. So actually, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we don't uh, uh, really look at booking large treasury gains, uh, you know, in our core, uh, SLR and other portfolios. Uh, we had uh, on other portfolios uh, uh, some profit, but we had a mark to market on our security receipts, uh, you know, portfolio, which, uh, uh, you know, the security receipts with underlying assets that we would have sold to the asset reconstruction companies over the years. So there was a small negative on that account, which gets reflected in the treasury line item. Okay, sure. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Saurabh S. Kumar from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, Arindya. Uh, so just on this uh, CPI rate, uh, so this 75-80% recovery rate that is seen on the retail world, you know, business, is that you think normal or uh, is it just sort of COVID we are just experiencing this strong moment? I'm just asking that your gross number is very high, is maybe two and a half percent and it is extremely low. So is net number sustainable is the question. Uh, so I, I think we have always been saying that the net additions in retail will go up and they have actually uh, gone up. But uh, uh, probably if you look at the uh, gross additions and gross deletions for the quarter, the deletions, uh, you know, which are accounted for by very old uh, uh, NPLs okay. would uh, would not be much. In fact, uh, now we have, uh, in addition to uh, pretty accelerated provisioning, we have fairly accelerated write-offs as well. So uh, I think uh, this this is uh, you know level of uh, uh, you know deletions is I would say you know not abnormal. But uh, having said that, as the portfolio grows, you know, and uh, seasons, uh, we will see an increase in the uh, net additions as well. Okay, that's good. Uh, second, sir, is on this RIDF, so your reduction, uh, which we have seen year on year, is this mostly a bank generation of loans? Sorry? I the RIDF. The RIDF. So these are, this is basically the net maturity. So we uh, we have had okay. more maturities of our RIDF uh, investments than the incremental investments that we have been called upon to make. 
Okay, so incrementally it is you must be meeting all the requirements even at this code. Is that your fair comment? So we are, we are, do we do meet uh, the overall requirement. Uh, we have uh, some shortfalls in a couple of the subcategories, uh, and uh, we do have some RIDS calls as well. But uh, the, those are uh, you know quite moderate, and the maturities out of the past year's RIDS portfolio have exceeded that. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll take our last question for today from N.B. Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. I mean, there are just uh, two questions. One, uh, when you look at the mortgage part of the book, uh, could you just tell us how have you uh, kind of worked through the borrowers with respect to the increase in interest rates? So the standard structure of a home floating rate home loan uh, in India is that uh, the uh, uh, you know when the interest rate rises, the EMI uh, the tenure gets extended uh, subject to certain uh, you know cutoffs which could be in terms of uh, age or uh, you know uh, certain you know criteria that are defi defined for the various uh, customers. And uh, similarly, when the interest rates decline, the uh, tenor uh, uh, gets shorter, and customers also understand uh, this cycle pretty well. So, in the current cycle, of course, given the you know sharp increase in the benchmark rates over a relatively short period, a fairly large part of the portfolio would have seen uh, an EMI increase, uh, but uh, that has happened. Okay. And the second question is that if, if you look at the increase in, uh, let's say, CASA ratio, um, does that growth slowdown reflect anything about the underlying customer profile? In the sense that are you seeing salary credits or uh, savings credits kind of significantly slowing down for rural in, this, in, the, in the portfolio? As a consequence of it, you should see a slowdown in the sector quite soon. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, what has happened is that we had two years of extremely strong uh, growth, and uh, probably this is a year when you know our segment of customers has seen a consumption recovery and so on. The second is, of course, as interest rates go up, uh, you would see some shift from uh, you know SAR to SD, uh, and those seem to be uh, you know the two main. Uh, factors, the base effect and the rise in interest rates on the savings account side. On the current account side, actually, uh, you know, when we look at the average growth, it has been a little bit better, although, you know, the, again, the circumstances in terms of tight liquidity and so on are not that conducive to current account growth, but we have been able to offset uh, some of that with our, you know, the digital propositions and uh, getting more uh, flow through the, through the bank. Okay, perfect. And one last data keeping question. Do you, have you reported the LCR issue? Yes, I think uh, Sandeep mentioned it. It was 124% for the quarter. Okay, perfect. Done. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll take a one last question from Adarsh Paras Rampuria from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Um, I'm sorry, sir, your voice is breaking. I'm sorry, sir, we are unable to hear you. I'm sorry, sir, we are still unable to hear you. So, yeah, uh, just, just, just keep my question. Thank you. Uh, we could hear you now. Can you repeat? Okay, uh, Anand, if you can, um, the question is on uh, fees. Um, we, we did have a bit of clean out on fees in the sense that we got choosy on selling insurance. Uh, we've, uh, we, we, we've let go of some prepayment charges and all. Just wanted to understand is that part of the base or it still takes uh, a little bit time before we get to normal fee growth? Well, I would think uh, it is uh, maybe in the second half. It is largely part of the base. Uh, insurance, of course, it has been a, 
is something that has been coming down uh, you know over the last couple of years uh, and the other charges etc is something that we have rationalized through the years so uh, it should probably be uh, you know you should probably be closer to the base uh, in that area and one question is you did say you had uh, employees but then i look at the uh, other expenses uh, x the employees has had a decent growth over the last couple of years right um, and uh, the accelerated technology spend um as mean slows down is that a lever or because you had branches uh, and given the profitability is too strong that will that should not be used as an rv lever no so i think we have consistently said that you know we believe that there is a good market opportunity for us and we will not uh, we will continue to invest in that and uh, if uh, you know for a couple of quarters operating expenses growth is higher than revenue growth we would not really worry about it too much as long as we have a have a sustainable path so we'll have to just look through that okay this is this one thanks i'm done thank you i would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments yeah thank you uh, as always for sharing time on a saturday and uh, we'll be happy to take uh, other questions that you have uh, after the call thank you on behalf of icici bank that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines <laughs>